Hi folks, Irish Trekkie, back with another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection issue review. We have the first of a good few Excel videos coming to you. We're going to start it off, I just think fittingly, with the Enterprise D. One of the very first ships that I reviewed on YouTube uh, was the regular scale Enterprise D here. So I'm looking forward to the XL. Um, for transparency, Egamos have supplied these models without any conditions. So again, I'm gonna review it, but my thoughts and opinions are my own. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are. And if you wanna pick it up, um, I left a link to the general website that uh, gives you information um about availability and pricing and all that good stuff but uh without further ado let's dive in and have a look at this shall we we're going to have a look at the model then we're going to have a look at the magazine because i want to kind of give you uh what you came to see but uh we'll see what other interesting goodies lay inside the magazine shall we a little bit later on okay so bigger box than normal and I have reviewed a few XLs previously on the channel as well. So I'm delighted to be able to just create these content for you because I wasn't planning on getting the XLs myself. I know a lot of people uh, are very happy with them and that's awesome as well. So um, I'm glad to be in a position now that I can actually make some content for you on the other XL lines. So I haven't actually had my hands on this at all, ever. I've refrained from opening the box. And uh, first impressions, impressive, <laughs> I will say that. You have your uh, traditional Eagle Moss mount and you have your Eagle Moss base there as well. So uh, 0857A slash A special. So again, this is part of the XL line, folks. So you're talking about bigger price tag can't get around that uh, but you're talking bigger ship as well oh there's heft in that wow that is weighty oh my god okay um that, that is substantially heavy um the construction is very similar to the traditional model but um wow color me impressed a little bit of a paint anomaly there but um yeah, let's get up close and personal and we'll check out this model. Okay, here we have the Enterprise D. Um, as I said, the construction seems very similar. Die cast, plastic drive section as well. Um, that extra size looks to be giving you some nice detail in here as well. So let's do an initial kind of run past with the, the paint applications and the overall mold. So you have your windows, um, nothing painted along the rim, but they're molded in there as well, which is nice. Uh, nice, clear, bold uh, windows across the uh, top section of the saucer. You have your phaser strip, your emitters, your registry, which is quite nice. Sculpt so far and the Aztecan is actually quite good. You can see the way the light is almost blending like we talked about specularity and Aztec and across some of the other videos. Specularity is my new word. Uh, I knew about it, but um, I was glad to be able to speak about it recently um, in certain videos. You have your nav lights. You have your shuttle bay. Very impressive, actually, I will say. And again, your aft decals as well. Aft nav lights, shuttle bay one, two and three. You have your impulse. So it's painted, but it's it's a very um it's a very kind of uh, shiny ruby red. And that looks to be plastic in there. From what I do you know it's not plastic. It looks like a little bit of another material, but painted again with the same paint as the um impulse. Drive section is quite nice. If you get up close and personal there. You have your aft phasers, your nacelles look very good, pennant, bizarre collectors, again plastic for the nacelles which is nice, your registry, ventral section decals look pretty good, again you have your Aztec and across, 
And um, paint looks quite nice, the, the tone and color palette used. Your skate pods, deflector detailing there if we get up close. I love the Enterprise D. Again, it was my first Enterprise. It's a little bit of a mark on that one. And just again, there's a paint anomaly here, but it's on the underside. Potentially could maybe get rid of that, but you know, I know that would that would be a game changer for some people. But I just want to kind of let you know that that is on mine. But the fact where it is, like you're not gonna see it. If it was like maybe here to be a bit more kind of awkward. Especially on the top of it as well. Very nice model. Um, quite a nice scale to it as well. Um, I'll compare it to the Enterprise as well. So you can kind of see it. Um, XL versus normal line as well. And when we had the two of them together. You can maybe see the difference in the um, paint applications. And the detailing between the two of them. Not alone just the scaling of it as well. But it's very, very hefty. It's a nice size. It's bigger than like the Corgi um, Enterprise D. The palette, the color palette is a lot gentler um, than the Corgi one as well. Yeah, I remember the Aztec was very bold on that one. But uh, let's see what she's like on the stand. And we we'll compare it to the regular Enterprise as well. So you can compare and contrast. But I'm very curious. So sound off in the comments below. Um, those that have it or those that are seeing this for the first time what do you think of the Enterprise XL? So ladies and gentlemen, there is your Enterprise NCZ 1701D XL, which is off center on my lovely rotating stand here. <laughs> that would do my head if I hadn't adjusted it. Um, sits very much at the aft off the base, which I think if from memory serves is a little bit different to the way the, the smaller scale Enterprise is, but that makes sense with the, the weight of this ship, uh, which is uh, quite phenomenal. Um, I am impressed, Co color me impressed. Um, those of you who follow me know my opinion of the XL line. Um, I had issues with the price uh, in addition with the, the normal run. I know no one was forcing anyone to buy the XLs, but uh, they were just kind of honestly out of my budget. But then I was kind of weighing up where they're worth it for the, the level of detail and maybe the extra uh, quality that could be associated with them. And uh, some of them have been very successful and some of them have had blaring issues um, in the past as well. I don't think this is one of the ones that have the issues though. This is actually quite impressive um, off a ship. And um, it, it, it really, it's, it's really nice to be honest with you. So um, let's, yeah, let's compare to the regular version, shall we? So when you look at them here side by side, um, they're almost at the same angle there now. So I'm just going to straighten up the XL version there, just so it's pretty much at the same side of it. But um, the Aztecan is a lot more bold, uh, a lot bolder even, if I speak correctly, on the XL version. And again, the addition of the size gives you just, it's not that it has kind of maybe more detail, but the detail is a lot, stronger, more defined. Um, like when you look at the bridge module, when you look at the detail around the, the bizarre collectors, uh, the shuttle bays and uh, that type of detail as well, that's where you're going to see the difference. I don't think it would be too absurd to think that, you know, you'd have more detail on the XLs than you would on the scales, but that just shows you how much detail are on the regular version uh, ships that we have in the collection. But um, yeah, it's, it's quite a nice, ship to be honest with you and um yeah the difference in the paint is really kind of um it's it's interesting the difference in the paint is interesting and there are differences uh, across the the enterprise d's as well like there was the enterprise in the triple pack there was the regular enterprise as well because i have another enterprise um in my display cabinet as well this is the enterprise that i, I broke the saucer off um but uh yeah that's pretty much the two of them there like even if when you look at the the impulse sections and stuff like that as well just things are just that little bit more defined is it worth buying that's a decision for you um again 
it's an investment to be honest with you with, with the pricing of them but um, compared to what's out there uh, that may be a good decision for you as well but um, that's the model so hopefully that will satisfy any questions that you may have had about it but uh, let's see quickly what's in the magazine before we wrap up the video so folks here we have the magazine lovely graphic on the front interesting color on the uh, ventral uh, phaser strip there but maybe there's some ambient light <laughs> that's going on um, so galaxy class 641 meters launch 2263 crew of 1012 so two sections in this uh, which is one of the XL magazines making uh, TNG back on board and the casting Star Trek the next generation so this is going to be additional content uh, not simply a repetition of um, the regular magazine so just kind of flipping through here so back on board uh, when Gene Roddenberry brought Star Trek back in 1987 he knew that he couldn't just uh, recreate the original series um, I'll be model there the creative crew so I'm just going to peruse through this you can see some of the nice concept art of it again holodeck separating modules here as well so it's nice to see some additional content actually gloriously curvy uh, futuristic bridge <laughs> I got all the lounge couches and stuff down here as well. <laughs> Man, the Enterprise D was cool. That's awesome. I like that. The communicators that were incorporated into the Starfleet badges that crew wore um, on their chest. So an actual, like a comms unit rather than the badge itself. Here we have some hand tools, tricorder, one of my most favorite pieces of tech. Love the tricorder. And uh, again, here we have the uh, conference area, uniform design, Q, bones, obviously. DeForest Kelly made a cameo appearance in the pilot. Indeed, he did. Again, here we have some fabrication of how the bridge is going to work out. So you have your tactical area here. You're going to have your um, operations and helm at the front. So again, feel free to pause. I'm not going to kind of read through, it's going to be just a brief kind of summary of uh, what's in here. So we have profiles then, uh, casting the next generation. So Riker, Data, Captain Picard, Dr. Crusher, Tasha Yar, and um, Deanna Troy, Jordy LaForge, Worf, ah, Wesley. Shut up, Wesley. And that's pretty much it. So we're going to close off there on uh, the issue of the Enterprise D. What did you think of the XL variant of the fan favorite um, Starship? Let me know, sound off in the comments below. So that'll wrap up this video. Um, thanks for stopping by, taking the time out of your day. Uh, thanks for your support. And uh, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you're not, make sure to hit that like button as well. And um, for those inclined, you can directly support the channel to help me continue to develop and evolve the channel over on uh, Patreon. All the links are in the doobly-doo down below. And if the XL is something that you're interested in, do check out the XL playlist for the other ships in the collection that I've reviewed as of shooting this video. And um, the link for the Eagle Moss shop uh, is down below as well. That'll give you uh, information on pricing and availability as well. But with that said, I've been your uh, local Irish Trekkie in this lovely internet uh, community of ours. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. So take it easy and goodbye.